I'm here because Jacqueline inspires me in her fight and her supporters inspire me too. And I want to lend my support wherever I can. Uh, and so much of our experience is similar. And I know that we are very, very strong as we get together. That it's more than just the two of us or 12 of us. That our fight is important for people all over this country. Peace. But what you have to imagine is a, a little room with a, a, a little table on it and groups of four at that end and four at that end. And they each have to sign, each person has to sign two to four thousand documents an hour. An hour. Oh, cool. And this is what they're signing. They're signing a court, an assignment of mortgage saying this mortgage was sold from this entity, the original lender, to this trust. They're signing a one, it's usually a one page document, assignment of mortgage, and they're signing, they say, and here I am, the officer of a bank or the lender, I'm a corporate officer, and here are the witnesses, and it all looks so good and official, and here's the notary, and it's all a pack of lies. What actually happens is that a person who's making eight to ten dollars an hour is sitting at the table signing 2,000 documents an hour. And they don't read it, they have no knowledge of anything in it. Uh, in one stack they are the Vice President of American Home Mortgage. In another stack they're the Vice President of Wells Fargo, the Vice President of American Servicing Company, the Vice President of Mortgage Electronic Registration Systems. But the number one thing is that tens of thousands of people all around the country are facing foreclosure with fraudulent documents from the banks and that hasn't changed one iota. Does it make a difference that they're fraudulent documents? If for certain judges, if any litigant walked into court with fraud and tried to foist fraudulent documents, they'd throw them out and say don't come back. That's happened in about two dozen cases that I know of countrywide where people have gotten, mm -hmm. been awarded their homes, but that's all. For most judges, there are dismissals, but not with prejudice. That means if you find your right paperwork, you can come back. Now, what this translates to amongst us is we have in this pocket a legitimate $100 bill. We have in this hand a phony $100 bill. We try paying our, our bill with a phony 100 and we get caught. And you say, oh, it's OK, I have a real one in the pocket here. Well, it doesn't matter. We're going off to jail for using the phony $100 bill. You know, so it really doesn't matter. But for banks, it does matter because we all know there's separate rules for banks because what we have learned over the last three years is they make the rules. We think we are governed by government, government but we're really governed by Wells Fargo and Jamie Dimon. Yes, but the Attorney General's office can send one person for every 10 the banks can send. You know, we're, we're understaffed, we're underfunded in this fight, and we lose every day. The only consistent winners are the Occupy people. The ones that really are able to get the banks to modify mortgages are the Occupy people, more so than what I see.